Are you ready for a Soka? Comes out today. I'm sure you're all just very excited for this. We've got reviews that we can actually go over. I just want to see what people are saying and, and talk about it. This was really funny. This is from the 8th of August. I missed this. But I thought we could start the video off with this article from the Direct. Dave Filoni calls Disney Plus' Ahsoka a religious experience. Probably for him, because he loves Ahsoka, because it's the only original thing that he's made. And he pushes her into everything. This guy is not the savior of Star Wars. He's actually literally quite the male feminist, to be honest. Go look at some of the things that he's said in interviews. But anyway, let's get into the show. So we can get some details just off of a couple of articles here. Ahsoka Review, Rosario Dawson's fan-friendly Star Wars show lacks Andor ambition. And this is kind of a running theme. We have a couple of articles that... Call it the anti-Andor. Here's the Hollywood Reporter. Ahsoka Review, Disney Plus's fluffy new Star Wars series starring Rosario Dawson is the anti-Andor. Why are they calling that? Well, because they're saying it's everything Andor isn't. Now, I guess Andor is actually a good show. I didn't watch Andor. The first two episodes I found incredibly boring, and I ditched the show after the first two episodes I didn't want to watch anymore. I had no reason to go back. I guess it gets a lot better. Uh, how about you just tighten up those sh <laughs> those episodes then and, and cut it down so that I don't need to watch two awful episodes to get into your series. So that show was highly praised by all of these outlets. All of them loved Andor. Critics and audiences for Andor, sc the scores for both are actually pretty good, but this apparently is no Andor. So every outlet's talking about, I guess there's MacGuffins in it. So we're going back to that J.J. Abrams type of storytelling. That's not something I really care for. Here's another one from The Independent. Ahsoka Review, Disney's latest Star Wars outing, is flat, flimsy, and devoid of life. Yeah, that's, that's pretty low, but I understand what some people are probably saying. Well, these are critics. And once again... What I always find fan I always find it fascinating when critics go against Disney. Disney is the top dog in media. And usually a lot of these journals, when they when they review a Disney movie or show, they will usually fluff it. Fluff it up, say, okay, well it's average, it's mundane, but it's still fresh. They'll say, it was kind of boring. Eight out of ten. Uh, so it's always funny to me when they give it low reviews. You'll see what happens when audiences actually review it, and we should have some audience reviews tomorrow. As of right now, though, with top critics added in, because you've got to remove the top critics. That's funny that they do that, isn't it? Because you would think the top critics are the ones that they value the most. No, uh, when it comes to critics, it's all critics. But when it's audience scores, the only the verified audience score matters but it's reversed for the critic score so the score is really possibly uh, it should be a 71 percent by their standard but it's funny to me that you got more fresh ratings with all critics only four with the with the top critics but you got eight rotten out of 34 fresh so i know those headlines didn't look good but apparently most critics like the show there's gonna be seven episodes here uh, let's take a look at some of these responses. So io9, a outlet that would never give Disney a bad review, by the way, ever. io9, uh, they were one of the biggest Brie Larson defenders and Captain Marvel defenders. I haven't forgotten the ones that ran out there to defend that pile of shit movie. The first two episodes of the first two episodes of Ahsoka struggle a bit, but ultimately develop the characters' relationships and stories enough that we're very hopeful the rest of the season will be as excellent as we all want it to be. A Geek Girl Riot with a male writer. Why is there a guy at Geek Girl Riot taking the spot of a woman? 
This show is going to be a must-see Star Wars show. This one says, if you're a longtime Star Wars fan that's been feeling a little underwhelmed with the most recent offerings, Ahsoka should not just rekindle your excitement for the franchise, but it will set it full on bonfire mode. A Zach Pope review says Ahsoka is remarkable, incredibly cinematic, and fascinating. John Kirk from Original Sin says, a dynamic show that showcases an iconic character. Uh, Consequence, a top critic, Liz Shannon Miller, says, a limited series in name only that is so deeply seeped in elements of Dave Filoni's corner of the Star Wars universe that it may prove alienating. That's another thing. So apparently, and this score is a B minus too, by the way. Uh, here's the thing with this show. Apparently you need to have not only seen Clone Wars, you really need to have watched Rebels. I did not watch Rebels, so not sure how I'm going to, I'm going to take it. And apparently Ahsoka has a Padawan. She's not a Jedi. So I don't, I don't quite understand what's going on with this. So a lot of freshes. Let's take a look at a rotten one. Here's from comingsoon.net from a technical standpoint. The show looks fantastic from an emotional standpoint. It's getting there from an action standpoint. It's got a long ways to go. Here's another rotten run from United Press International. Ahsoka proves as dramatically inert as Boba Fett and Obi-Wan. Here's a funny positive one. This is from the San Francisco Chronicle. Ahsoka has a fresh feel. It would be fresher, though, if Star Wars could just find new themes to explore and do so and do so in ways that don't require so much standing around and talking. Boy, that sounds exciting. Uh, this shows no House of the Dragon, I'll tell you that. I guarantee you it's no House of the Dragon. And the reason I use that comparison is House of the Dragon is literally people sitting around and talking, but the writing is so good and the actors are so good that it's entertaining. And I'm not saying Rosario Dawson is a bad actress. In fact, I, I, I like her, actually. The problem is it's the writers at Disney <laughs> that it can't. they don't have that kind of talent. So I don't know. And that, that review is funny because it's, it's 2.5 out of 4 is still fresh. Literally a middle of the road. This is my problem with stuff like uh, Rotten Tomatoes. How do you score that in? So it's still fresh, but it's a, a middle of the road review it should be like some kind of neutral sign to be honest but whatever that's where we're at so i don't know how do you feel about the show are you going to watch it are you excited could you care less uh what are your thoughts let me know in the comments also if you would please like subscribe share the video make sure you're still subscribed hit that notification bell check out my rumble and locals and i'll see you on the next one peace make sure to check out my locals there's a link in the description it's a fun community that I'm trying to build over here. If you don't want to support me on YouTube, you can come over here. None of that money goes to YouTube. You also can just come over here for free. But if you are a supporter over here, I do plan on doing an extra live stream once a month and throwing links to the supporters so you can actually come on and have a supporter live stream with me. Also, it's a good place to catch all of my content. You don't have to worry about notifications like YouTube, they'll definitely work over here. So come check out my locals.